Gateshead Council News, Winter 2023. Dear resident, local government touches the lives of everybody every day, sometimes in ways people don't realise. As a council, we continue to provide hundreds of services for our residents, and as councillors, we're elected by you to represent your views and are accountable to our local communities. We are fully committed to delivering the best services we can for the people of Gateshead within the limits of the challenging budget pressures we face each year. That is why our approach to our priorities, our financial planning and future developments within the borough are crucial to helping us make Gateshead a place where everyone can thrive. This month we will be considering our corporate priorities for the next five years which we believe will deliver the best outcomes for Gateshead and our financial strategy to support this. We will be consulting on our budget and our Gateshead plan, which will set out our long-term vision for future developments in the borough. It's vital that we get your views to inform these consultations. Despite the challenges we continue to face, I'm proud of the support we give to our communities, including many small businesses, our cost of living support and warm spaces network, additional investment in environmental improvements and the fantastic services offered by our local libraries. We also continue to help those families and young people most in need with our family hubs. The fantastic work of our foster carers, our autism hubs, our Brighten the Day activity programme and with our shared lives carers. We continue to deliver a huge number of services, however the support of our communities is crucial to our future. The impact of working together cannot be underestimated. We all have a role to play in helping Gateshead to thrive and we look forward to continuing to work with you all to deliver and fight for the best outcomes for our borough. As this is our winter issue, I'd like to take this opportunity to wish everyone a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Councillor Martin Gannon, leader of Gateshead Council. Christmas opening, Civic Centre, Libraries and Leisure Centres. The Civic Centre, 23rd to the 26th of December, closed. The 27th to the 29th of December, open. 30th of December to the 1st of January, closed. And 2nd of January, open as usual. Leisure Centres and Libraries, 23rd of December, open as usual. 24th to the 26th of December, closed. 27th to the 30th of December, open. 31st of December to the 1st of January, closed and 2nd of January, open as usual. Reckington Library will be closed between the 24th of December and the 1st of January. Contaminated recycling bins will not be emptied. Continue to put non-recyclable materials in your recycling bin and we will refuse to empty them. This is the message we are regrettably being forced to share with residents as contamination levels in recycling bins reach unprecedented levels. Councillor Linda Green, chair of the South Tyne and Weir Waste Management Partnership said, Despite frequent reminders of what we can and can't recycle, every week we are finding more and more contaminants in recycling bins, including food waste, liquids, dirty and greasy food packaging, black bags and carrier bags, gardening waste, electrical items and even soiled nappies. While most people recycle responsibly for which we are grateful, some for whatever reason aren't getting it right and it's rendering whole bin loads and even entire lorry loads of recyclable materials unusable. It's also costing us a lot of money that could be better spent elsewhere. This is unacceptable and will not be tolerated any longer. From now on, we'll be checking bins prior to emptying, and if we find obvious contaminants, we have instructed our collection crews not to empty them. Instead, we will apply a red tag to your bin, advising you to remove the contaminant and dispose of it correctly before it will be emptied. Top tips for recycling right. Check our website at www.gateshead.gov.uk forward slash A-Z recycling for a comprehensive list of items that can and cannot be placed in your recycling bin. If in doubt, leave it out. If you're unsure if an item can be placed in your recycling bin, leave it out or place it in your household waste bin. And wash and squash. Rinse food waste from containers and bottles and fold any cardboard. To arrange collection of larger items that won't fit in your bin, visit www.gateshead.gov.uk forward slash 
bulky waist. Are you ready for the digital switchover? The UK's telephone network is changing. Between now and 2025, most telephone providers will be moving their customers from old di- analog landlines over to new upgraded landline services using digital technology. This means services that rely on the old landline systems, such as home phones and healthcare devices, will be switched over. Your telecoms provider should contact you before the switchover to discuss what you need to make sure your service isn't affected. However, we're encouraging everyone to know what to expect. If you have an internet connection, the change may be as simple as plugging your phone into your broadband router rather than the socket on the wall. Here are some tips. If you or someone you know depends on their landline or uses a telecare device connected to a phone line, such as a fall monitor, lifeline or personal alarm, you should contact the provider of this service so they can advise you how the switch could affect you. If you have other devices connected to your phone line, such as alarm systems, you might need to upgrade your device to make sure it's compatible. If you're unsure about how a device in your home or business might be affected, contact the equipment supplier or manufacturer to find out whether it'll work on a digital phone line. New name for Sage Gateshead. This September, Sage Gateshead became the Glasshouse International Centre for Music. As part of a new set of ambitions and linked to the idea that music lives and grows here, the Glasshouse is launching a new music pass, planting a seed to support future music lovers. For every baby born in the North East and Cumbria this year, the charity will give families a voucher to be spent on their concerts, gigs or classes. Gateshead remembers. Gateshead has once again paid tribute to hundreds of servicemen and women who lost their lives fighting for their country. The Field of Remembrance, planted in Saltwell Park for the 11th year, included thousands of poignant wooden crosses and other commemorative markers, each featuring the name of fallen servicemen and women. Mark Reynolds, Royal British Legion Northumbria County Chairman, said, We owe an enormous debt to all members of the armed forces who demonstrate an unwavering commitment to service, putting themselves in harm's way to defend the freedoms we all enjoy. It's an honour to mark the opening of this year's Field of Remembrance in Gateshead. Mayor of Gateshead, Councillor Eileen McMaster, said our region's strong relationship with the armed forces stretches back generations. It's a huge privilege for Gateshead to host the Field of Remembrance for its 11th year and to one of the brave men and women who have made the ultimate sacrifice for our country. Armed Forces champion Councillor Stuart Green said, I'm extremely proud to see a huge attendance at this year's Field of Remembrance dedication. Every uniform service was boosted by a large number of cadets to support our armed forces and veterans to honour the fallen. Saltwell Park has also become home to a new memorial bench to remember Flight Sergeant Lawrence Allen. The Mayor of Gateshead joined family and members of the RAF Association Newcastle and Gateshead branch for the official unveiling. Legendary Comedian Honoured Bobby Pattinson has become an honorary freeman of Gateshead. The title, the highest honour that we can bestow, was presented in recognition of his contribution to charity, business and entertainment. Bobby, known as the godfather of North East comedy, was born and has lived in Gateshead throughout his life. Bobby has performed in different parts of the world, rubbing shoulders with some of the biggest names in showbiz. He's also honoured for all of the fundraising and charity work he's done over the years, making a difference to the lives of others. Bobby said, Gateshead is me and I am Gateshead and it feels an honour to have this recognition. I'm very, very happy about it. Not bad for a funny face comic from Gateshead, he said. Well, Councillor Catherine Donovan, Deputy Leader of Gateshead Council, said, Gateshead has an international reputation for creativity, for art and for achieving things beyond what others believe is possible. We know how powerful culture can be as it's been at the heart of our borough's regeneration for the last 30 years. Today gives us the opportunity to celebrate someone who has not only achieved so much in his field, but has also done everything he can to promote culture, heritage and the arts, whilst going above and beyond to help others. New lease agreed to protect St Mary's. We've agreed a long lease arrangement with Tyne and Ware Building Preservation Trust to secure the future of St Mary's Heritage Centre. 
The Grade 1 listed building was formerly the parish church for Gateshead and features spectacular medieval architecture. More recently, St Mary's was used by the council to host local history talks, exhibitions and workshops, as well as weddings and other private hire events. However, the income generated through these activities has not been enough to cover the costs of running and maintaining the building and its surroundings. Having carefully considered all available options, Cabinet agreed that leasing the site to a trustworthy and experienced heritage partner offers the best solution for protecting the building and giving it a sustainable future, whilst relieving some of the Council's financial pressures. Thank you to the Centre's visitors and St Mary's Heritage Group for their support and understanding. We will continue to work closely with this group and the Trust to help inform the Centre's future use and protect one of Gateshead's most valued historic buildings. If you'd be interested in using St Mary's for an event, please email info at twbpt.org.uk. Restoring our iconic Tyne Bridge. The next phase of work to restore the Tyne Bridge will start early in 2024, with the A167 across the Tyne reduced to one lane in each direction. Lane closures will inevitably lead to congestion on the approaches to the bridge, so all who travel locally, not just those crossing the bridge itself, will need to make plans for how to make journeys while the bridge is operating at half capacity. The four-year restoration programme will involve steelwork repairs, grip blasting and repainting, concrete repairs, drainage improvements, stonework and masonry repairs, bridge deck waterproofing and resurfacing, parapet protection and bridge joint replacement. The first phase of the £32 million programme has been scaffolding built below the bridge deck around the Gateshead Tower. Early next year, lane closures will be required as work moves on to the arch and road deck at the Tyne Bridge itself. Councillor Martin Gannon, leader of the council, said we're going to need everyone in the region who loves the bridge to do their bit to help us minimise the disruption that the restoration will cause to the transport network. I'm confident it will be worth the wait. It'll be a proud day for everyone in the North East when our time bridge is restored to its former glory. We've been working with Newcastle City Council to help people plan their journeys, including promoting alternative routes and improving public transport links. For more information and updates on the restoration and help with travel planning, visit www.timebridge.org. Avoid dangers of charging devices at home. We're warning residents to be alert to the potential dangers of charging lithium-ion batteries at home following an alarming rise in fires caused by malfunctioning devices. Lithium-ion batteries are rechargeable batteries that power everyday items, including mobile phones, laptops, mobility scooters and vapes. Most of the time, these batteries are safe. However, if stored, used or charged incorrectly, or if they're damaged, they can pose a major risk to life. Top tips include, always use the charger that came with your product. Follow the manufacturer's instructions to charge batteries and unplug when the charge is complete. Never leave a charger plugged in overnight or unattended. Only choose branded, genuine products from a reputable retailer. Avoid storing, using or charging batteries at very high or low temperatures. Ensure you regularly check batteries for signs of damage. If a battery is not holding charge, gets hot, bulges or you hear hissing noises when charging, unplug immediately. Always charge e-bikes, e-scooters clear of exits. Never cover chargers or battery packs. Install working smoke alarms on every level of your home. And if there is any evident signs of fire, such as battery smoking or flames, raise the alarm immediately, get out, stay out, and call 999. Get further advice and guidance on fire safety within your home from the Prevention and Education Team at Tyne and Weir Fire and Rescue Service on 0800 032 7777 or email our fire safety team at firesafety at gateshead. .gov.uk A1 traffic vital slip road closed The slip road joining the southbound carriageway of the A1 at junction 67 known as Cole House is closed for at least four weeks from Sunday November the 12th This means all traffic that would normally join the A1 at this point including from Team Valley Trading Estate will need to divert to junction 68 Lobley Hill to join the A1 Traffic will be diverted through Team Valley back to Junction 68. The diversion only impacts those wanting to access the A1 southbound. 
All of the traffic to Aladdin, Lady Park and Lamesley remains unaffected. National Highways is leading the multi-million pound project to widen the A1 between Burtley and Cole House. Work on the slip road will continue 24 hours a day to minimise how long the slip road is closed. The A1 Burtley to Cole House widening project still has many months to run. People Gateshead, nominate your hero. Gateshead has lots of incredible people doing everything they can to help others. Acts of kindness and people taking pride in supporting their local community have made a huge difference to our borough. If you know someone that has gone the extra mile, nominate them for a Gateshead Award. There are 11 categories this year. The Maureen Chaplin Sports Achiever of the Year, Volunteer of the Year, Voluntary Charitable Organisation of the Year, Young Achiever of the Year, Sports Club of the Year, Carer of the Year, Music Group Musician of the Year, Business of the Year, Armed Forces Community Achiever of the Year, Tackling Climate Change and the Lifetime Achievement Award. To nominate, go to www.gateshead.gov.uk forward slash Gateshead Awards and the closing date is Friday, February the 23rd. For more information, contact the Mayor's Secretary on 0191 433 2011 or email Mayor's Office at gateshead.gov.uk. Summer School inspires students into health and social care careers. In partnership with Community-Based Care Health Federation, a not-for-profit GP federation, we ran a successful summer school to inspire the next generation of health and care professionals. The CBC health team engaged with young people from local schools in year 9 and above who have an interest in health and social care, as well as those who did not yet have their career pathway decided to show the opportunities within our health and care sector. In total, the summer school supported 30 students over two weeks with workshops, classes and professional advice. The students met with individuals from a wide range of different job roles and career paths such as social care workers, nurse practitioners and mental health professionals. Through working in the Queen Elizabeth Hospital and other healthcare settings, they were able to gain real perspective on how many people are involved in responding to health and care emergencies. Councillor Michael McNestry, Cabinet Member for Adult Social Care, said the summer school was a fantastic success in inspiring the next generation of health and social care professionals across our partner organisations. Careers in social care have never been more important as the demand on the profession continues to increase post-pandemic, particularly for mental health support. It's great to see so many young people take an interest in joining the sector and finding out more about the vast range of roles on offer. Find out more about jobs we have available at www.gateshead.gov.uk forward slash jobs. Changes to postal voting. Any elector who wishes to apply for a postal vote must now provide their national insurance number in addition to their date of birth and signature. Anyone unable to do this or where their identity could not be verified with Department for Work and Pensions records will need to provide documentary evidence to prove their identity, for example a copy of their passport or photo driving licence. Electors will be able to apply for a postal vote online provided that they can upload an image at their wet ink signature at www.gov.uk forward slash apply dash postal dash vote. Transitional arrangements are in place for current postal voters who were due to provide a fresh signature in January 2024 and January 2025 to retain their postal vote until the 31st of January 2026 without the need to provide a fresh signature. Postal voters who wish to continue to vote by post will need to reapply for their postal vote every three years. This will replace the current requirement for postal voters to provide a fresh signature every five years. For more information, go to www.gateshead.gov.uk forward slash postal vote or ring the election team on 0191 433 7001. Adopt North East turns five. Adopt North East provides adoption services for us and other local councils. Since its launch five years ago, Adopt North East has found loving forever families for nearly 500 children and supported hundreds of adoptive families. 
Among the growing community of adopters is Lynn, who has benefited from the ongoing dedicated support and guidance that the agency offers through the process. Speaking of her experience, she said, I feel a huge sense of gratitude to Adopt Northeast for welcoming me into the adoption process with them. I have felt a greater degree of empathy and support here than in any other agency I've been in touch with. I've been impressed by the professionalism in each interaction. The training was similarly delivered to a very high standard and I feel very grateful to have had the opportunity to take two days out of my life to seriously reflect on my life-changing decision to adopt. More than 20 children are waiting to be adopted right now. To find out more, contact Adopt Northeast about adoption, the ongoing support you would receive by visiting www.adoptnortheast.org.uk or email adoptnortheast at adoptne.org.uk or you can phone 0191 643 5000. You can also join one of the informal, warm and honest information events. The next online event takes place on Tuesday the 5th of December 2023. Gateshead Foster Carers Celebrate 10-Year Milestone A pair of dedicated foster carers are celebrating their 10-year milestone with us. Carers Carol and Paul have had a huge impact on our fostering community over the last 10 years, having fostered 50 young people between the ages of 10 and 18, including sibling groups and mother and babies. They are also the first Mockingbird Hub carers, giving support to others and the young people in their care. Carol, who previously worked as a welfare officer, said, We chose to foster with Gateshead Council as we felt it was important that the children stay in their own communities and attend the same schools with their friends. Gateshead's fostering team has been amazingly supportive and the training available to carers is great. It gives carers a real understanding of the children's perspective to support them as best as possible. Paul, who works as a teacher, said, If anyone is considering fostering, I would say go ahead and do it if you feel you have the time, patience and are able to offer children stability. If you feel you could make a difference to a child's life, visit our website for more information, www.gateshead.gov.uk forward slash fostering or you can call us on 0191 433 833. Have your say with Family Voice. We're proud to offer families across Gateshead access to our family hubs, which provide a welcoming space for families in the wider community. Our family hubs support families from conception to the age of two to give all children the best start in life. We continue to support families with children up to 19 and up to 25 for young people with special educational needs and disabilities. We want to improve our service based on feedback from parents and carers, so we've set up Family Voice, our new parent and carers panel for Gateshead Family Hubs. By joining the group, you can have your say on support services at your local family hub, what you would like to see more of from Gateshead Family Hubs, how you prefer to find out about service updates and new classes, and what times and days work best for you to use our services. Register your interest or find out more information by calling 0191 433 6310 or email familyhubs at gateshead.gov.uk. For more information about Gateshead Family Hubs, you can visit www.gateshead.gov.uk forward slash family hubs. New provider for Gateshead Autism Hubs to offer improved support. An award-winning Northeast-based charity, Daisy Chain, has been commissioned by the local partnership to improve and extend the offer of support for autistic people across Gateshead. The hubs, funded by the Northeast and North Cumbria Integrated Care Board, will be provided by Daisy Chain and Gateshead Family Hubs. Daisy Chain was established in 2003 to support and empower autistic and neurodivergent individuals through the provision of holistic, person-centred services while promoting training, well-being, inclusion and acceptance regionally and nationwide. Following the opening of Daisy Chain Megastore in Team Valley, the second store in its retail offering earlier this year, Daisy Chain has been commissioned to provide its offer through Gateshead Family Hubs. Well, Gateshead Autism Hubs offer parents and carers of autistic children and young people 0 to 25 years information, advice and support on a range of challenges that can impact autistic young people and their families. The hubs provide drop-in sessions, peer support groups and training for parents, carers and professionals. 
Every autistic individual has their own strengths, differences and needs, which is why varied support is essential for autistic people and their families to thrive. Councillor Gary Haley, Cabinet Member for Children and Young People, said, Our autism hubs are a service we're proud to provide our neurodivergent communities, and it's brilliant news that we can improve and extend the offer with our new provider, Daisy Chain. By bringing in a provider with so much specialist knowledge of autism and neurodiversity, we can ensure that our families and practitioners are benefiting from inclusive support and training locally, while autistic people can feel empowered too. For more information on Gateshead Autism Hubs and the support on offer, visit www.daisychainproject.co.uk forward slash gateshead dash autism dash hubs forward slash. You can also email gateshead-autism-hubs at daisychainproject.co.uk or call us on 01642 531 248. Thank you for making every contact count. A huge thank you to our fantastic network of Making Every Contact Count champions. The MECC network is made up of council employees, partners, members of the public and colleagues from local businesses, charities and voluntary organisations who play an important role in sharing important health messages across Gateshead. If you're interested in becoming an MECC champion, email mecc at gateshead.gov.uk. Don't forget to register to vote. If your circumstances have changed, it's important to make sure you're registered to vote so you can vote in any upcoming elections. Please call the election team on 0191 433 7001 or email electoralregistration at gateshead.gov.uk. You can register to vote online at www.gov.uk forward slash register dash two dash vote. <laughs> Fair Gateshead. Hundreds more young people set to benefit from free travel. A successful pilot project is being rolled out thanks to the region's Bus Service Improvement Plan, or BSIP, funding to expand a free travel offer to over 1,500 young people who have lived in care across Tyne and Weir, Durham and Northumberland. Last year, more than 300 young people who've recently left local authority care in Newcastle and Gateshead were offered free travel on the local bus and metro network to support them into adult life. The pilot scheme, the first of its kind in the country, was a partnership between Newcastle City Council, Gateshead Council, Nexus and bus operators, with funding from the NHS North East and North Cumbria Integrated Care Board. One year on, over 1,800 free journeys have been taken every month. Councillor Gary Haley, Cabinet Member for Children and Young People, said there's no better way to celebrate the one-year anniversary of the pilot scheme than by talking to the young people who have benefited from the free travel and hearing what a difference it's made for them. The offer of free travel for even more care leavers in the region is brilliant news and we're proud to have been part of the pilot that has helped secure the funding to make this happen. Gateshead Health Research Collaborative celebrates its first anniversary. Our Health Determinants Research Collaborative, or HDRC, is celebrating its first year of developing research capabilities to help tackle health inequalities in the area. We were one of the first 10 local authorities in the country to receive funding as part of a £50 million investment by the National Institute for Health and Care Research. In its first year, Gateshead HDRC has built a team of researchers and developed collaborative research teams which include academic partners and voluntary and community sector organisations. The team are working on a number of research projects including evaluation of Gateshead Council's Warm Spaces initiative, research and evaluation to support our active travel project as part of the government's gear change plan, Research and evaluation of Gateshead's frailty, strength and balance intervention approach with Gateshead NHS Foundation Trust and domestic abuse research to improve the safety of children in education and enhance health outcomes. Our HDRC intends to build on its capacity across the council through funded training and skills building to enable employees to develop as health and or social care researchers whilst retaining their existing employment and salary. Residents and community groups will help to identify how best to tackle inequalities through people-led research that will influence and create change in our area, helping our residents to thrive. 
To find out more about the research and to take part, contact hdrc at gateshead.gov.uk or visit www.gateshead.gov.uk forward slash hdrc. Learning and Skills celebrates impressive service for young people. Our Learning and Skills service is celebrating fantastic feedback on its services for young people following an evaluation of the quality of information, advice and guidance it provides to the learners by the Department of Education. We offer impartial advice and guidance to help young people aged 13 to 19 to help them explore their vocational interests and access jobs market through post-16 education, training and apprenticeships. To find out more about the Council's IAG service and how they can support you, visit www.gateshead.gov.uk forward slash IAG or contact the team on 0191 433 2785. Cost of living support. This winter we're continuing to support Gateshead residents who are struggling with the cost of energy, food and other essentials. Councillor Catherine Donovan, Deputy Leader of Gateshead Council, said we're working with our partners to make sure that help is available for households in greatest need, particularly those that may not be eligible for financial help from the government. Through the Household Support Fund, for example, we're helping to reconnect energy supplies, support food banks, fund meals for eligible children during school holidays and provide extra support for those families at Christmas. Our network of warm spaces offer a warm welcome to anyone who needs a safe and friendly place to spend some time. As always, we're extremely grateful to our voluntary and community groups whose venues are part of our network. Warm spaces are community centres, libraries, church halls, sports clubs and other places for people to take part in activities and socialise or can simply be somewhere to sit with a hot drink. Warm Spaces staff and volunteers are trained to help residents find the right support for a broad range of needs. So, with the support of Citizens Advice Gateshead, Warm Spaces will continue to be places where residents can go to keep warm and be signposted towards help with bills, debt, food and more, if they need it. Staff and volunteers have also signed up to the Warm Spaces Charter, developed in partnership with the Gateshead Poverty Truth Commission, uh, to guarantee all visitors will be welcomed and treated with dignity and respect. Facilities range from free Wi-Fi access and refreshments to book borrowing and play equipment, so find a warm space near you and see what's on offer. We look forward to welcoming you there, and you can check out the warm space areas by visiting www.gateshead.gov.uk forward slash warm spaces or call 0191 433 7112. Could you offer a warm space? If you're part of an organisation across the public, private, voluntary or community sector and could offer your facilities as part of the Warm Spaces Network, please complete our short registration form at www.gateshead.gov.uk forward slash warm spaces or to find out more, email warmspaces at gateshead.gov.uk. Reduce your energy bills. These simple tips from Citizens Advice Gateshead can add up to significant savings on fuel costs. Heat your home as efficiently as possible by heating the room you're in while you're in it. 18 to 21 degrees C should be adequate for rooms that you're most in, like the living room. Plug-in radiators and heaters use a lot of electricity, so use them sparingly. Move furniture away from radiators to let warm air circulate better. Slow cookers and air fryers use less electricity than ovens. 30 degrees C or lower is sufficient for washing clothes unless you work in a profession like nursing or construction. Open curtains in the morning and close them at sunset. Letting sunlight into a room can help raise the temperature by a few degrees. Avoid charging devices overnight. Chargers don't know when a device is fully charged, which means that they will use the same amount of energy whether a phone is charging or fully charged. Block drafts around windows, doors, chimneys, flooring, loft hatches, pipework and cracks in the walls. Turn down the boiler flow, temperature for heating and hot water. Find out how at energysavingtrust.org.uk. When drying clothes, don't put them directly on a radiator as this can affect its ability to heat the room. Use a drying rack next to the radiator and open a window slightly to prevent condensation that could lead to mould. Don't leave electricals on standby, switch them off at the wall and only fill the kettle with the amount of water needed. Kettles are one of the highest users of electricity in a property, and the more water they have in them, the more electricity is used. 
Find out more information and advice to help you with the cost of energy, food and other essentials at gateshead.gov.uk forward slash cost of living or call 0191 433 7112. Recycle right this Christmas. An extra 25% of waste is created during the festive period and despite much of it being recyclable, some of it is not. To help you know what you should and shouldn't be putting in your blue recycling bin this Christmas and New Year, please refer to this helpful guide. The nice list. Glass bottles and jars. Make sure they're clean and there's no liquid left in them. Plastic bottles and cartons. Remember to wash and squash. Cardboard. Aluminium cans and containers, including biscuit tins, give them a rinse and squash if possible. Aerosols, paper and cardboard, including packaging, take the polystyrene out first and make sure it's dry. The naughty list, batteries, can be damaged during processing and cause fires. Glitter, or any items featuring glitter. Food, dirty and greasy food containers, wrapping paper, Difficult to recycle due to tape, foil and other contaminants. Christmas decorations. No tinsel, holly wreaths, lights or baubles. Greeting cards featuring glitter, glue or foil. Christmas trees. Chop them up and put them in your garden waste or take to the household waste recycling centre. And electrical items can instead be recycled at your local HWRC. Bin collections. We have some changes to our bin collections over Christmas. Monday the 25th of December, no collection. Tuesday the 26th of December, no collection. Wednesday the 27th of December will be Tuesday's collection. Thursday the 28th of December will be Wednesday's collection. Friday the 29th of December will be Thursday's collection. While Saturday the 30th of December will be Friday's collection. On Monday the 1st of January there will be no collection. On Tuesday the 2nd of January, collections will return to the usual day. To check when your bins are due to be collected, go to www.gateshead.gov.uk forward slash bin checker. Household waste and recycling centres. Got too much waste over the festive period? Don't forget you can book appointments for our two HWRC sites across Gateshead. Campground in Reckington and Cowan Road in Bladen. Both are open all year round except for Christmas Day, Monday to Friday, 9am to 5pm and Saturday to Sunday, 9am to 6pm. You must book your visit in advance. For more information, visit www.gateshead.gov.uk forward slash HWRC. Stay safe this winter. Our team are now monitoring the weather 24 hours a day to help keep Gateshead roads safe from snow and ice. It can be an extremely busy time of the year for the team, but did you know that we have 600 miles of road across Gateshead, so we have to prioritise gritting routes with high levels of traffic. We have 323 miles of priority road to be gritted in freezing weather, the equivalent of gritting Gateshead to Southampton each night. Our fleet has nine frontline gritters and four spare gritters as well as a loading shovel. Each route takes two or three hours to complete and uses around eight tonnes of salt. Be prepared. Avoid blocking roads for gritters, emergency and refuge vehicles. Keep windscreens, mirrors and windows clear of snow and ice. Check your screen wash bottle is full and has fluid suitable for low temperatures. Make sure your vehicle is in good condition with correctly inflated tyres, working lights, a fully charged battery and enough fuel for your journey. Keep a few winter essentials in your car, like a spade, a blanket and something to eat and drink. Keep your mobile phone fully charged and make sure you take it with you. And Gritters travel at a lower speed than most traffic, so please be considerate and try to overtake. Gateshead Council Services Introduction from the Leader of the Council Gateshead is unique and different to many other places in the United Kingdom. We're two-thirds rural, but then have densely populated urban areas and towns. We also have different levels of health inequality, with life expectancy varying depending on where you live. In our poorest areas, people's lives can be up to 10 years shorter than in our better-off areas. This can be as much as 15 years shorter than the wealthiest parts of England, and this is not right, nor is it acceptable. 
We have a part to play in the life you lead and we aim to deliver a good level of service for you. We provide hundreds of services each day, some of which you'll see and some of which you'll only need when you require it, such as social care. Some residents of Gateshead need us more than others. We're a big, complex organisation and recognise that we won't always get things right first time. What we promise, though, is to listen and take on board your feedback and apply improvements along the way. Although, due to budget cuts, we're unable to deliver everything we used to or that you might want us to, we will continue to deliver the best services we can for the people of Gateshead. Councillor Martin Gannon, leader of Gateshead Council. 2023, some achievements so far. Invested £168 million over the next five years in housing services. 23,597 day places were filled by Gateshead children at Brighton the Day Clubs held during the Easter and summer holidays. Business Gateshead worked with over 350 businesses which has resulted in over 470 jobs being created or safeguarded. Zero Carbon Gateshead continued to lead the way with power generated from zero carbon renewable sources while Gateshead Family Hubs launched Family Hubs to give children the best start in life. Highly commended for our climate change work at the Municipal Journal Achievement Awards. Established a warm spaces network with over 70 organisations registered and invested an additional £2 million in environmental services. Making Gateshead The strength of Gateshead is the people of Gateshead. Our corporate plan sets out our priorities for the next five years and shows what we believe we can deliver to support the people of Gateshead and help everyone to have the opportunity to thrive. Our priorities will undoubtedly change over time and as this happens, we'll work with our communities and stakeholders to ensure they're right for the council and for the borough. However, one thing that will remain constant is the fact that we come together to help each other to thrive and to support our communities. We can achieve so much despite the challenges we may face. The vision. We want a great borough with vibrant communities where businesses can grow, residents feel supported and live fulfilled lives and our environmental impact is minimalised. We are committed to running an organisation that puts our residents first, delivers value for money and works with our communities to ensure we focus on what is important. We are committed to People Gateshead, putting people and the families at the heart of everything we do. Fair Gateshead, tackling inequality so people have a fair chance. Communities Gateshead, supporting our communities to support themselves and each other. Prosperous Gateshead, investing in our economy to provide sustainable opportunities for employment, innovation and growth. And Future Gateshead, working together and fighting for a better future for Gateshead. All the work we do to deliver our pledges will be underpinned by good customer service, sound financial planning, inclusivity, good governance, continuous improvement and culture. We want to focus on the needs for our residents and to understand what matters to our local communities. We'll be identifying as many opportunities as possible to talk to our residents and stakeholders about our plans for the future. We continue to face significant challenges with our budget and local authority funding and demand pressures are both national issues. And we're now looking at potential savings for our 2024-25 budget and we'll be considering our budget approach for the next five years with our medium-term financial strategy. We're proud that we have a strong track record of delivering a balanced budget and managing within our resources and we'll continue to work hard to ensure this continues. However, we know there will still be difficult decisions to be made and we'll still have to use our reserves to deliver our budget, which is a one-off and not sustainable solution in the long term. Since 2010, we have £977 less to spend per resident. In the next five years... Our costs are expected to increase by 77 million, but our income by only 28 million, a funding gap of 49 million pounds. Our budget consultation will start on the 24th of November. Please visit www.gateshead.gov.uk forward slash budget to give us feedback, or if you don't have any internet access, call into one of our libraries to use the computers for free and ask for help if you need it. The Gateshead Plan. How can we make Gateshead a place where everyone thrives? Well, one way is through our new local plan, the Gateshead Plan, which will set out our long-term vision for future development in Gateshead, looking ahead to 2045. 
As part of creating our new local plan, we're starting the conversation with you. We want to hear from our residents, community organisations and businesses to help shape the future of Gateshead to ensure it's a place where everyone can thrive. Some topics we're hoping to hear from you on include how do we support local shopping centres? What are the big issues facing Gateshead as we look towards 2045? How can we ensure residents have access to good quality homes and jobs? How can we ensure development respects and enhances our natural and historic environment? What would you change in your local area to make it a better place to live? And what do you think is the best way to tackle climate change? This is the start of the process and our plan will take several years to develop. Once completed, it will set out a clear pathway for future development in Gateshead, including policies that uh, new initiatives will be assessed against. To get your thoughts, our start of the conversation, the Gateshead Plan consultation, will run from Monday the 6th of November to Friday the 5th of January. There are three ways you can be part of the conversation. View and respond directly to the online consultation, gateshead.gov.uk forward slash the Gateshead Plan. Visit our central library and civic centre for a paper version of the consultation, which can be handed in on site. Or speak to us at one of our drop-in events. Details are set out on our Have Your Say on Planning webpage, gateshead.gov.uk forward slash the Gateshead Plan. Well, almost 90% of properties in Gateshead are in the council tax bands A to C. 39% of our income comes from council tax. As part of 2023-24 budget, an additional £19 million was invested in social care to support those who need it most. Our services cost just over £772,000 to run every day. Help us improve our housing services, customer contact options. Are you a current council tenant with a passion for making a positive difference to the lives of people living in our communities? If so, we want your help to review our housing services, customer contact options. We know that contacting our housing service is not always as easy as it should be and we want to make it simpler. We've recently been reviewing all customer contact to understand how and why people get in touch with us and we're using this information to help co-design a new approach to customer contact with council tenants which gives an excellent customer focused experience. For more information, please contact our customer involvement team at involve at gateshead.gov.uk or ring 0191 433 5357. Other engagement groups you can get involved with are Resident Influence Panel, Residents Experiences Influence Service Design and Delivery, and we act on what you tell us. Multi-Story Safety Group, improving the safe operation and management of our multi-story housing. And Equality, Diversity and Inclusion Group ensures our services are fair, accessible and designed for the needs of all of our customers. For further details, visit www.gateshead.gov.uk forward slash housing involvement. Delighted residents realise vision for communal lounge. Residents at the Wood Green Bungalow Complex in Pilar are praising the council after we work with them to realise their ambitions for their communal lounge. Originally built in 1938, the site is home to 130 residents, but the shared lounge had increasingly become in need of modernisation. We worked with residents to help make their dreams a reality. The works included a new roof, a fully refurbished interior, including an extension to accommodate a brand new contemporary kitchen, New windows, a new utility room and a new boiler and communal laundry facilities. A complete rewire and decorated throughout, as well as new external security doors. The residents were delighted with their renovated lounge and threw a party to celebrate its opening. And Lynn Walker, who has lived in the development for 47 years, said, I can't begin to tell you how much this means to all of us. It's especially heartwarming for me to show people around with pride. Thank you so much for including us in the process. We love it. New housing development helping regeneration of our town centre. To help regenerate Gateshead Town Centre and its surrounding areas, our new housing development on the site of the historic former Freight Depot railway sidings is taking shape. Delivered by Gateshead Regeneration Partnership with funding from the Council and Homes England, this will improve the quality and availability of housing in Gateshead. It will feature 270 new two, three and four bedroom homes, which when completed will be available for sale, for private rent and offered for affordable rent. 
Uniquely, the development also benefits from it being connected to the council's district energy heating network, which provides low carbon energy to homes at prices below market rate, utilising sustainable sources. Councillor John Adams, Cabinet Member for Housing, said, I'm thrilled with the progress being made on the freight depot development. We're dedicated to building new modern and energy efficient housing in Gateshead. It will not only help provide additional options for current residents, but will hopefully encourage those from outside the area to consider Gateshead an ideal place to settle and raise a family. This will in turn boost the local economy, acting as the catalyst for further investment and growth in new homes and local businesses. The first homes are expected to be completed in early 2024 and in addition to Freight Depot, the council has committed to investing £168 million in its housing service over the next five years, which is expected to deliver even more new homes across Gateshead in the future. Sign up for Garden Waste Collections. It may be winter, but we're also planning for spring by encouraging residents to be greener in the garden. Subscriptions for next year's Garden Waste Collection service have now opened, and anyone who subscribes before the 31st of January will pay £34 for 15 collections. The annual charge for those subscribing after January will be £36, and you may not be registered in time to receive all 15 collections. Well, Councillor John McElroy, Cabinet Member for Environment and Transport, said, Our garden waste collections provide a very convenient service for residents who sign up and are beneficial to the environment. Garden waste sent to landfill can release harmful greenhouse gases, but by recycling the waste, it's turned into compost, which benefits gardens, parks and green spaces. 25,000 households signed up for the service last year and helped do more for the environment. We understand the financial pressures many local people are facing, so the charge for this service only covers the costs. Alternatively, residents can compost garden waste by making a compost heap in their garden or buying a compost bin. To sign up for next year's garden waste collections, go to www.gateshead.gov.uk forward slash garden waste or phone 0191 433 7000. Investment to improve neighbourhoods. To help make Gateshead's neighbourhoods a cleaner and nicer place to live, we're investing £2 million to help tackle incidents of Environmental Antisocial Behaviour, or ASB, including fly-tipping, graffiti, littering, dog-fouling, drug and alcohol use in public areas, hate crime and harassment, as well as improving our capacity to maintain green spaces. Many of us take pride in the place we call home, but the actions of the few can very quickly make areas look untidy and unpeeling. This investment will help us to respond quickly to reported instances of environmental ASB. We will also be increasing patrols to help prevent antisocial activities and taking enforcement action to penalise offenders. Councillor John McElroy, the Cabinet's Member for Environment and Transport, said the environment in which people live can have a direct effect on their well-being and by working closely with residents and listening to their needs, we're developing a more responsive and much improved service to help tackle the environmental issues that matter to them and help improve their lives. We can't do it alone though, we need vigilant residents to report any instances of ASB as soon as possible so we can intervene and provide appropriate action and support. We are recruiting to new roles and buying new equipment to allow us to better maintain public areas and parks including increased grass cutting, tree maintenance, weed control and street cleaning. We'll work closely with our local teams to support activities including volunteering and community action to maintain these spaces. To report an incident of antisocial behaviour, visit www.gateshead.gov.uk forward slash ASB. North East Councils to take next step towards historic devolution deal. A devolution deal with governments is expected to provide £4.2 billion of additional investment to the region over 30 years, including a £1.4 billion investment fund alongside significant funding for transport, education and skills, housing and regeneration. The cabinets of the seven local authorities involved in the North East deal, County Durham, Gateshead, Newcastle, North Tyneside, Northumberland, South Tyneside and Sunderland, will hold meetings this autumn where councillors will be asked to move ahead with the plans. 
The Cabinet will be asked to give their consent for an order to be made in Parliament to abolish the existing North of Tyne Combined Authority and North East Combined Authority and for them to be replaced with a new North East Mayoral Combined Authority. The NTCA and NECA will also be asked to take this decision. In a joint statement, council leaders said the feedback from residents, businesses and other stakeholders across the region has been very positive and we look forward to taking this opportunity to improve the lives of the two million people who are proud to call the northeast of England their home. Advantex continue nurturing local talent. For several years, Advantex, a prominent local technology solutions provider, has championed its annual apprenticeship program, which supports its commitment to both local talent and professional development. With an annual intake of four to five apprentices, the program embodies Avantex's enduring dedication to nurturing the local workforce and providing them with a path to career advancement. Focusing on upskilling local individuals and offering an opportunity to excel in the dynamic technology sector, the company's commitment to staff retention is evident. It places immense value on creating a familiar atmosphere with the workplace teamwork and excellence not just words but a daily mantra. Advantex ensures that apprentices receive accredited training in collaboration with recognised bodies, and this training doesn't stop at industry standards. It extends to incorporating world-leading products such as Cisco and HPE, guaranteeing that apprentices are well-equipped to thrive in the fast-evolving technology landscape. Ellen Mosscrop, data engineer apprentice, shared her experience saying, I'm thoroughly enjoying the apprenticeship at Advanced Tech. The mix of intensive training and hands-on on-site experience is both challenging and rewarding. It's a fantastic opportunity to learn and grow in this ever-evolving field. Through this programme, Advantex continues to shape the future of the tech industry, one apprentice at a time. What can you bring to the Gateshead Exchange? A new online service has been launched to match groups in need of practical and financial support with those with the capacity to provide that support. Our social value initiative, Gateshead Exchange, is aimed at unlocking the capacity in all the suppliers who provide goods and services to us. All goods and services required by publicly funded organisations like Gateshead Council are bought based not just on price, but on securing wider social, economic and environmental benefits for the people and communities of Gateshead. Gateshead Exchange is designed to bring suppliers together in one place. Schools, colleges and community groups within Gateshead can submit requests detailing what they need, and our suppliers can submit offers of support or requests. We will then match up the social value offers based on need. Councillor Linda Green, Cabinet Member for Communities and Volunteering, said there are so many excellent organisations and companies in Gateshead with so much capacity for improving the borough, enhancing the environment and helping out the voluntary and charitable sector with projects they can't fund themselves. I'm delighted we've created this central point of contact where we can put people in touch to help ensure some really brilliant projects can come to fruition. If you need any further information, please email procurement at gateshead.gov.uk. Tell us what support you need or can offer at www.gateshead.gov.uk forward slash gateshead exchange. Business Workshops, 26th of November, Shaping the Business Support Landscape in Gateshead. We've teamed up with Newcastle University to offer this interactive session for pre-startups, startups and SMEs to collectively identify and prioritise the challenges you face in your entrepreneurial journey. 31st of January 2024, Survive and Thrive in Business. Find out the potential risks, costs and problems before going forward with your business idea, delivered by Dr Natalia Radko, entrepreneurship educator and a consultant for startups. She's a lecturer in entrepreneurship and innovation at Newcastle University Business School. To find out more, go to www.businessgateshead.co.uk forward slash events. Spotlight on Small Business Saturday. Since January, we've supported 40 businesses starting up across Gateshead, from coffee shops to pottery, gardening to electrical. We've been on hand to guide and assist individuals with advice, guidance, workshops and networking events to celebrate Small Business Saturday on the 2nd of December. We're shining a light on some of the small businesses we've supported over the last year. The Kiln Pottery Studio. 
A creative community hub in the heart of Lowfell provides a safe place where people can come to express their creativity, have a bit of me time over a coffee or try something new with friends and family in the form of pottery painting. Prism Coffee Speciality coffee bar and eco corner shop in Saltwell Park, serving the dog walking community as well as families that are visiting the park. Transport Network Connect, a civil engineering consultancy that strives to enhance the overall travel experience for users, whether driving, walking or cycling, with vast knowledge in conducting road safety audits and road safety studies to ensure the safety of the network. They also provide design and project management services for the delivery of minor highway improvement schemes, public realm and active travel. Mind Matters Limited Offering in-person mental health first aid training, a two-day training course to diverse sectors, providing individuals with the ability to recognise early signs of mental health issues and guide those in need. Grow Plus Play Provide unique classes for infants, toddlers and preschoolers in Lowfell, the classes are fashioned by a certified primary school instructor based on Montessori principles, where the children determine the direction of the activities. The classes are filled with enjoyable and captivating activities that help the children in their individual growth and development. Denise's Pieces Furniture The business stands out in a market saturated with generic mass-produced flat-pack furniture. Personally selected high-quality used furniture is transformed into exceptional one-of-a-kind bespoke pieces that are distinctive and unique. Accounting Alley Limited Provide personalised and friendly accounting, bookkeeping and administration services to start-up businesses, micro-businesses, sole traders and freelancers. Based in Gateshead, but have the ability to work remotely, which gives flexibility to work with clients as and when they need support. Don't forget, Small Business Saturday takes place on December the 2nd. Channel 4 and North East Screen Industries Partnership collaborate in the region. Channel 4 and the North East Screen Industries Partnership have signed up to a collaboration to help build the production sector and develop talent in the North East. Working closely with North East Screen and other partners across the region, this will enable better opportunities for the production community to engage with Channel 4 and forge strong creative relationships, include specific commissioning and development initiatives to develop the production capability in the region, provide bespoke training and skills support to tackle skills gaps and open up creative careers to a wider range of people. And the overall aim of the agreement is to support the growth of independent production in the North East, building the potential for more commissions from the region and enabling more careers in TV production. Chatterbox Open Satellite Office called Natterbox Following the formation of the public sector-led North East Screen Industries Partnership, or NESIP, and the BBC's commitment to commission a minimum of £25 million of programming spent over the next five years, Chatterbox have opened a satellite office in Gateshead. Operating as Natterbox, the team hopes to harness the unique potential and cultural richness of the North East, shining a spotlight on some of Britain's most stunning landscapes and attracting new commissioning spent to the area. Natterbox is also looking to foster local talent through the creation of new apprenticeships and training programmes, providing fresh routes into the television industry and empowering aspiring creatives in the North East to pursue their passion for production. The female-led team regards diversity of thought as integral to its DNA and wants to nurture the next generation of creative talent through early career mentoring and guidance, creating jobs for local residents. Natterbox brings an impressive track record of producing hit shows such as Meet the Carnes, Extraordinary Portraits, Sally Lindsay's Posh Weekends and, of course, Charlotte in Sunderland. BBC Three has just announced the second season of the hit show, which follows TV personality Charlotte Crosby as she looks to settle down in the northeast of England. The programme's first season averaged 300,000 viewers and generated 448,000 engagements via social media, with a combined total of 36 million impressions. Councillor Malcolm Brain, Cabinet Member for Economy, said it's fantastic to welcome Natterbox to Gateshead. They join a thriving hub of creatives who work within all aspects of the screen industry. Over the years, we've invested into the screen industry with our facilities at Proto. Behind the four walls of the black box, there is a wealth of innovative technology which assists with the production of programmes and films. 
Combine this technology with a friendly northeast welcome and the continued commitments from the BBC and Channel 4, and I'm sure we'll see continued investment from other media companies. Nav Rahman, founder and executive producer of Natterbox, said, Our mission is to collaborate with the best creative talent in the country, both on and off the screen, to produce bold, entertaining and compelling content for major platforms and broadcasters. Launching Natterbox in the North East will not only help us do that, it will allow us to join an exciting ecosystem of incredible businesses who are at the forefront of innovation in all aspects of screen entertainment. Communities Gateshead, not just books. Whether you want to find your next great read, try something new or connect with others, Gateshead Libraries offer something for everyone in warm, friendly places where everyone is welcome. Free and low-cost events and activities to entertain your little ones, even when they're not so little anymore. Arts and culture activities that are proven to benefit health and well-being for people at every stage of their lives. We offer all sorts of opportunities for people to explore their creativity. Free cube computer and internet access in all of our libraries, as well as courses and workshops including computer skills for beginners and how to use the latest creative technologies in the maker place. The Sound Gallery. Gateshead Central Library is the largest audio-visual library in the Northeast, and with a collection of 25,000 CDs, DVDs and Blu-ray titles, at just 50p per CD higher and £1 per DVD or Blu-ray, it's more affordable than many streaming services. A fantastic range of books for all ages, from board books for babies to best-selling adult fiction and non-fiction. Book borrowing is completely free. We no longer charge late fees and you can reserve books free of charge if they're in stock or on order. You don't need to visit the library to choose your next read. Borrow Box has a great range of e-books, e-audio books, e-magazines and e-newspapers, all available to download on your phone or tablet. Sign up for our Readers at Home service. Each month we'll deliver your selection of books, large print books or audio books free of charge and directly to your door. Visit www.gateshedlibraries.com or call 0191 433 8410 or visit your local library to join for free. Walk and Wheel Gateshead. We're taking part in a nationwide social prescribing pilot to improve mental and physical well-being through walking and cycling, funded by Active Travel England. Walk and Wheel Gateshead is now up and running in the Central, South, East and Burtley areas, working alongside GP practices and link workers to offer free help to get active. Councillor Bernadette Oliphant, Cabinet Member for Health and Wellbeing, said the team work with individuals to understand the challenges they're facing and help them to incorporate walking or cycling into their daily routine. This is undoubtedly beneficial for health and well-being and also helps us to understand how we can make sustainable travel easier for everyone. The team has been offering walking sessions at family hubs, libraries and warm spaces, as well as doctor bike cycle repair and maintenance sessions and learn to ride sessions for adults. During the winter, the team will offer weekly group walks setting off from GP practices in Central South, East and Burtley wards. They're open to everyone aged 16 plus, regardless of your fitness or confidence levels and wheelchair users are welcome too. To find out more, visit www.gateshead.gov.uk forward slash walk and wheel or email active travel at gateshead.gov.uk or you can call 0191 433 3200. Gateshead Litter Champions. Congratulations to three schools who've worked with artists to set up their own litter champions clubs to help reduce litter in school grounds and their local community. Year 4 pupils at Windy Nook Primary School work with Beth and Laker to create their own Litter Pickers Club badges and slogan, Just Bin It. At Kelvin Grove Primary School, Josie Brooks worked with Year 6, who created display using recycled materials. Meanwhile, Year 5 made personal pledges to help tackle litter around the school and the community. Students in H1 at Sheworth Grange School worked with Tommy Anderson to create striking posters. The students learned about macro photography techniques from Tommy and used minifigures and litter collected in the school grounds to create posters. Banners are being produced for each school so residents can see the messages created by the children. Groundwater study helping find more solutions. 
The project Groundwater Northumbria team led by us continue to increase understanding of groundwater and preparedness of local communities through innovative approaches and technologies. Groundwater is water stored in rocks and open spaces and moves freely through these spaces. Groundwater levels can fluctuate seasonally when excessive water accumulates, it can rise to the surface, potentially causing flooding. Over the summer, the team attended the Northumbrian Water Innovation Festival, an annual event known for tackling challenges faced by the water industry and its partners by using bold and innovative approaches. Each year, different businesses identify challenges to the water industry, such as climate change and water poverty, and assemble a diverse group of industry individuals with various skills and expertise to collaboratively devise solutions. The PGN team took away creative solutions to help develop understanding of groundwater and flooding. This has resulted in STEM, science, technology, engineering and maths learning being integrated into the project to help educate children about groundwater flooding and natural environment. The PGN team have since conducted interactive sessions at the local primary school with clear ties to mining history. The school's construction was founded by families who received compensation after a major explosion in 1860. During the event, Year 5 pupils explored the impact of water and flooding on urban and forest environments and conducted practical experiments to understand how different environments influenced water movement. The study in Gateshead is expected to last 12 months to ensure sufficient data has been collected which will help to understand and work towards reducing groundwater and groundwater flooding in the borough. More information about the project can be found at www.projectgroundwaternorthumbria.org.uk Planning for Nature's Recovery Woodlands, wildflower meadows, wetlands, birds, butterflies and mammals are among the habitats and species that will benefit from a new government funded project to create a local nature recovery strategy or LNRS to help boost nature in our area. Gateshead, South Tyneside and Sunderland councils are working together to prepare an LNRS to cover the south of Tyne and Weir. Our LNRS, one of 48 in England, benefiting from £14 million of government funding, will enable local communities develop a tailored nature recovery strategy for their area, bring nature into other local decisions like where to build or how to manage public open space, help communities map out the action needed in their area to restore nature, enabling them to work closely with local stakeholders, from farmers and landowners to local interest groups and school children. Councillor John McElroy, Cabinet Member for Environment and Transport, said, We're really pleased to support the creation of a local nature recovery strategy for our area. This is an important step forward to prioritise the natural world and help with the creation, restoration and protection of habitats from our wildlife. This is a crucial time for the environment and this project will be a key plank of our work to restore nature and tackle the climate crisis in the years ahead. Natural England has a key role in supporting LNRS preparation with senior advisors working in each of the 48 areas with colleagues in the Forestry Commission, Environment Agency and DEFRA offering technical expertise. Make a friend while making a difference. Shared Lives matches an adult or young person with additional needs with a dedicated carer who opens up their home and family life to that person. Shared Lives carers encourage the individual they're supporting to learn new skills, grow their independence and live life to the fullest. Each person in need of support has different goals and so each arrangement looks different. Opportunities can involve carers welcoming someone into their home for anything from a few hours a day right up to many years. Often shared lives is compared to fostering, but instead of being about parenting, the bond is more like a friendship. That's because, as well as those supported being 16+, plus, we carefully match people based on their likes, hobbies and interests. Well, being a shared lives carer is incredibly rewarding. You'll experience the joy of witnessing someone you care for grow in confidence, try new things and be happy in a safe and loving home. It's also a flexible home-based role and you can receive a generous allowance in return for your time. You don't need formal qualifications or experience, we'll provide you with all the training you need. If you've got a big heart, commitment and are willing to share your home and family life with someone, make a friend whilst making a difference and become a shared lives carer. 
Find out more by visiting www.gateshead.gov.uk forward slash shared lives or call 0191 4332 461. Cracking down on tenancy fraud. Six councils and nine social housing providers, including Gateshead Council, ran Regional Tenancy Fraud Awareness Week 2023 in October. The campaign urges anyone who suspects tenancy fraud to report it in confidence so further checks can be made. The aim is to fight social housing fraud, which is depriving families and vulnerable people getting the homes they need. Tenancy fraud occurs when a council home is not occupied by the name tenant or is sublet, when a home has been obtained by deception or when succession has been wrongly claimed following the death of a lawful tenant. Amy Hodgson, chair of the regional North East Tenancy Fraud Forum, said the National Tenancy Fraud Forum calculate the average cost to the taxpayer per detected tenancy fraud in the UK is £42,000 per property. This means that during the financial year 2022 to 2023, with the help of our residents, our fraud teams have been able to save the region £2.9 million. A further 144 right-to-buy and right-to-acquire sales have been stopped through enhanced verification and anti-money laundering checks, saving the region an additional £5.4 million in discounts. Councillor John Adams, Cabinet Member for Housing, said if you have a suspicion about a property near you or you've noticed a house that has been abandoned for some time, please get in touch. There could be a genuine reason, but abandonment is one of the most common cases of tenancy fraud we deal with and we will investigate the circumstances. If you suspect something, make an immediate note of your concerns and report them at www.gateshead.gov.uk forward slash article forward slash 4993 forward slash report dash suspected dash fraud. Or you can ring 0191 433 2805 or you can email fraud reporting at gateshead.gov.uk. Award success. Congratulations to our employees and foster carers who were successful at this year's National Children and Young People Awards, recognising exceptional care for children, young people and families. Steve and Helen, two of our foster carers, won the Foster Carer Award for their dedication to the children they support. Our kinship care team, who support children and young people looked after by family members or family friends, won the Biggest Impact Award for their efforts to promote positive change in the lives of children and families. Our Social Work Academy, which supports newly qualified social workers, was highly commended in the Biggest Impact Award category. While individually, Phoebe Swan, a member of our safeguarding team, was nominated as one of only 10 finalists in the Newcomer Award category. In your area, Wright and Men's Shed now open. Wright and Men's Shed at Wright and Methodist Church is now open with a new workshop, new flooring and parting wall. Affiliated with the UK Men's Shed Association, it's a place for retired and semi-retired or for those who have had to give up work for long-term health issues to go for a cuppa and a chat or to get involved in the woodwork shop. The Men's Shed will continue to provide handy person work for the church and will also look to further their work with other community groups and schools in the area. Members can either work on their own projects or get involved with community activities and the group meet every Tuesday and Thursday from 10am to 3pm. Chopwell and Blackhall Mill Cleanup Day a huge thank you to everyone who helped at the Chopwell and Blackhall Mill cleanup day in the summer. We had a fantastic turnout of volunteers made up of residents, ward councillors, the community partnership, council employees, Northumbria Police, Tyne and Weir Fire and Rescue Service, Liz Twist MP and others. Although we've invested an additional £2 million in our environmental services to help improve our neighbourhoods, it's really important for everyone to take pride in their local community. Bowling Club continues success. The poor summer weather has not stopped Ravensworth Community Bowling Club having another successful season. Successes included winning the Charity Cup in the Northumberland and Durham League. Pat Conley won the Yates Cup, an individual two-ball knockout competition. Runners-up in the Veterans League in the Durham Bowling Federation. Malcolm Pete, George Pete and Pat Conley won the McDougall Trophy. Malcolm Pete won the two-ball Champion of Champions competition. 
And final days in August, attended by the Mayor of Gateshead, Councillor Eileen McMaster, was an opportunity for all members to get together to watch the culmination of our in-house competitions. The club welcomed new members of any age or ability. Equipment and tuition is provided by experienced players and are all made welcome. To find out more, email ravensworthbowls at gmail.com. Exciting news for local park. Felling Park has been successful in receiving £85,000 levelling up funding from central government, which has to be used to invest in local areas and communities. We've also contributed £60,000 and worked with the Friends of Felling Park to develop the plans to improve the park. Well, work will include a new multi-games area, table tennis table and seating in the old tennis courts, along with new surfacing and fencing. In addition to the existing play equipment, there will be a new toddler play equipment, a trail, traditional games like hopscotch and a learn-to-ride-your-bike track. More fruit trees, shrub and bulbs will also be planted along with a wildflower meadow. Other improvements will see repairs to the walls, new handrails, path repairs, replacement seating and bins and new interpretation and signage throughout the park. The new signage will tell the history of the park itself. The Friends Group have been instrumental in helping with the design and will host an event to celebrate once the works are complete. Councillor Angela Douglas, Cabinet Member for Culture, Sport and Leisure, said it's fantastic that we're investing in great new facilities for Felling Park, which will give visitors an even better experience when they spend time there. I'd like to thank the Friends of Felling Park for all their hard work in helping us to make this possible. Every second counts. Are you the guardian of a defibrillator in a public place, community or business? Make sure it's registered on The Circuit. The Circuit is a national network of defibrillators which provides ambulance services with visibility of the nearest registered defibrillator. This helps emergency call handlers to direct bystanders to the nearest defibrillator when 999 is called. Well, tragically, less than 1 in 10 people survive an out-of-hospital cardiac arrest. However, CPR and early use of a defibrillator can double someone's chances of survival in some cases. Register on The Circuit today. Give your defibrillator its best chance of saving a life at www.thecircuit.uk. Furniture provider appealing for donations. Foundations Furniture, a not-for-profit organisation providing very affordable furniture and appliances to those most in need throughout Gateshead. They rely on donations from across Tyne and Weir, and with stock levels currently low, they're appealing for anyone who has unwanted furniture or appliances to get in touch, and they will arrange to collect free of charge. They're in particular in need of single and double beds, mattresses, wardrobes, drawers and sofas. Find out more at www.foundationsfurniture.co.uk Fraud is not a victimless crime. Help us stamp it out and report it. Online at www.gateshead.gov.uk forward slash fraud. Email fraudreporting at gateshead.gov.uk or the fraud hotline is 0191 433 2805. Get ready to swim. We have something for everyone to enjoy in our swimming pools, including special educational needs and disability swimming sessions. We offer quieter sessions aimed at families who have children with special educational needs and disabilities. Although SEND swimmers are welcome at all swimming sessions, this dedicated session gives children a more relaxed environment in which to enjoy swimming whilst also having fun as a family. Adult swimming lessons. Are you missing out on water activities and fun with your friends, children or grandchildren because you can't swim or aren't very confident in the water? It's never too late to learn and we can help whether you're a complete beginner, a nervous swimmer or someone who wants to improve their technique. Start now by booking one of our adult swimming sessions and be ready for summer 2024 to join in the fun. Visit www.gogateshead.co.uk for more information on joining or what's on offer in our leisure centres. Winterproof your ride. Don't let the winter put you off using your bike to travel for leisure or to work. Here are some top tips from walking, wheeling and cycling charity Sustrans to help you stay safe. Number one, keep your feet warm. Wear appropriate non-slip footwear and invest in a decent pair of socks and waterproof shoes. Number two, wear waterproof gloves and a hat. 
make sure your vision hearing isn't obscured and you can brake, change gear and grip your handlebars safely. Number three, be prepared for all weather. Check the weather and dress adequately in winter cycling gear. Always make sure you're visible by wearing high-vis clothing and check your bike lights before you leave. Number four, wear lots of thin layers. It's easy to get hot even in winter. Wearing multiple thin layers means you can take things on and off. Number five, quality waterproofs. Make sure that you're wearing quality waterproofs which will keep you dry and warmer. Tip number six, keep your bike in tip-top condition. After riding in bad weather, give your bike a general rinse and wipe down to remove dirt, salt and grit. Dry it off with an old towel and disperse any excess water in moving parts with a spray of WD-40, GT-85 or something similar. Number seven, get a grip. Good tyres will help prevent unnecessary skidding and will lessen the likelihood of having a f to fix a puncture. Inflating tyres a little less improves traction in slippery conditions. Number eight, pedal with care. Pedals get slippery in the wet. If you're not comfortable with clipping pedals, invest in some with extra grip. They're pretty easy to fit or your local bike shop can give you a hand. Number nine, take it slow. It will take a while for your body to warm up properly, so go slow when you leave the house. Don't risk your safety for the sake of a few minutes. Tip number 10, keep out of the gutter. Puddles, which will freeze, are more likely to form in the gutter, and you're better off staying in the centre of the lane where cars have driven and cleared the snow. Keep clear of leaves, manhole covers and cracks in the road, as they can be unexpectedly slippery. 11. Stay in control. Make sure you're in full control of your bike at all times. When riding on settled snow, brake often to clear the rims. If icy, steer straight, don't pedal and try not to brake as you could skid and fall. And finally, number 12. Think about conditions. If too treacherous, don't be ashamed to put the bike in the shed and head back inside. For more information on walking, wheeling and cycling, go to www.sustrans.org.uk.